welcome to today's wonderful webinar on Coast Mountain College MSM AJT Trainee 2021 Live. I see a lot of attendees in the process of joining me, hoping that all of you are safe and healthy wherever you are attending this webinar. A good morning, a good afternoon, a good evening, ladies and gentlemen from all parts of the world. I would like to thank all of you for taking time out of being here today with us. I am fully sure I will be me and I will be your moderator for today's webinar. For those who don't know me, I'm the manager for Africa. I am delighted and pleased to introduce today's spearheader of the webinar, Jessica Scarf, the International Recruitment Coordinator for Coast Mountain College. Before I hand over the mic to Jessica, I would like to run through the housekeeping requirements that are needed for today's presentation and the Zoom platform. So what is today's agenda for the webinar? First, you will be hearing a comprehensive presentation on Coast Mountain College and opportunity at British Columbia. Then we'll be taking questions during today's webinar and I will request all of you to drop in your queries in the Q&A session present in the control panel. The question will be answered at the end when we have our Q&A session. Please feel free to ask all your queries why the presentation is on progress. For those who are just joining in, welcome to today's webinar on Coast Mountain College MSM Agency Summit 2021 live. Without further ado, I would like to welcome Jessica Skev for the presentation. Thank you. Over to you, Jessica. Hello and good morning, good afternoon. Uh, nice to see everybody here joining us today. Uh, as he said, I am Jessica Scaife. I am the International Recruitment Coordinator for Coast Mountain College and I'm located in Terrace, British Columbia in Northern Canada. Um, so today the presentation is um, going to focus on um, the post-degree business administration diploma that we offer as well as our Associate of Science degree. So I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen and let me know if you can see it. We good? Yes? Yes, Jessica. Yes. You can see okay. your screen. You can Perfect. Go. I just wanted to make sure before I begin. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, as you can see, this is a photo here of our Terrace campus. So I'm gonna focus um, the presentation, as I mentioned, on the two programs, the post-degree uh, business administration and our associate of science today. Um, and each of these programs are available at different campuses. So I will um, dis discuss this. Um, both of these programs are available at our Terrace campus, which is the photo here, and that is our main largest campus. So we are located in Northern British Columbia, as I mentioned, and we do have um, three campuses in which international students are eligible to enroll in. So Terrace, as I mentioned, is the main campus. Then we also have Smithers and we have Prince Rupert. Um, business administration is available at all three of these campuses, but um, they have different intakes, which I will talk about in a minute. Um, and then the Associate of Science program is only available at the Terrace campus at this time. Um, so as you can see, Vancouver is here and Terrace is located further up here. Um, Prince Rupert is located on the coast of the Northwest and Terrace is inland and then Smithers even more inland. So they look really close together and they are. Um, they, Terrace is about a one and a half hour drive from Prince Rupert and Smithers is about a two hour drive from Terrace. So we are um, all similarly. Um, and Terrace is located about a two hour flight from Vancouver. Um, if students, if you wanna tell students how, to, um, how, how far it is uh, by land, it's about an 18 hour drive, but it's only about a two hour flight. So um, definitely uh, accessible easily from Vancouver. So our regions, um, we have the Terrace campus and Terrace is located um, in the central of uh, Northwest BC. And we have housing on campus in Terrace. We also uh, offer a full service cafeteria for our students and a fit fitness facility, which is state of the art and brand new. Um, we opened it 
in 2019. So right before COVID hit. So at this point, it's barely been used because it's been closed for the past 16 months or so. Um, our Terrace campus is located on 30 acres. So it's actually a very large campus. Um, and right now it's undergoing many updates, including our student housing is getting brand new. I have a, a rendering photo um, in, later on in the presentation. So the housing should be completed by August. We, we do have students that will be staying in it for this September. So we're really excited about that. Uh, and then we're also getting a full renovation on our main building right now as well, which includes our library and where our health and science labs are. So we are gonna have a state of the art campus by the time this is all complete. We're very excited. We also have a community longhouse on campus, um, which was de designed for our First Nations students in mind, but it's available for use for all students. Um, it's where we hold orientation and a lot of our student events. Um, we also have two computer labs and lots of study spaces on campus for students to enjoy some quiet study time. And the city of Terrace has a world-class ski hill for students that are interested in learning how to ski or snowboard. Um, we have mountain biking, fishing, kayaking. We have a really beautiful outdoor area here. So students can really uh, truly experience um, the Canadian experience when moving to the Northwest. Uh, we also have a booming economy in Terrace right now and a lots of employment opportunities. Um, if you haven't heard of it, um, Kitimat is a, is a town that's about um, a 30 minute drive away from Terrace and they are developing a liquid natural gas LNG facility. And because of that, we have a lot of work camps available and we are developing new restaurants and new businesses quite often because of uh, just, we have a, a lot more people in our area. Um, so there's also infrastructure jobs as well because we're building houses and um, fixing our roads and so lots of lots of opportunity for employment in all different sectors right now in the Northwest. Um, and we experience all four seasons in Terrace. So definitely prepare your students for that because we do get snow, um, which our international students actually really enjoy. Um, so Prince Rupert campus, as I mentioned, is located on the Inner Harbor in the North Coast. So it's actually right on the ocean. Um, our campus there is smaller than the Terrace campus. It has, it does not have housing currently. So students do have to live off campus. Um, and that is an option for Terrace as well. Students can of course live off campus if that's what they choose to do. Um, our campus in Prince Rupert is located close to town within walking distance. Uh, there's a multi-purpose room. There's an innovation science lab with virtual reality and 3D printing. There's a student lounge and a learning resource center as well. Um, Prince Rupert has mild coastal temperatures almost all year round. So the weather in Prince Rupert is very similar to Vancouver. Um, they occasionally get snow, uh, but definitely not as much as Terrace. They don't have a ski hill uh, or anything like that. So definitely um, stays a little bit warmer and milder in Prince Rupert. So as I mentioned, Smithers is a little bit more inland than Terrace is. It is our smallest campus and Smithers is also the smallest city that we have a campus located in. It is our newest Coast Mountain College campus, and it's about a four hour drive to Prince George, which is the nearest city, uh, largest city driving. And we have a business intake in Smithers each May, and the one in Prince Rupert is in January, and then Terrace is every September, and we'll talk about that a little bit more further on. Um, the Smithers campus was sustainably developed with thermal, the thermal heating, and it's made of beautiful cedar and glass. It's a beautiful, beautiful campus. So all of our cities that have campuses in are considered smaller cities, um, but they're very welcoming and they're actually very diverse for how small they are. So just some photos of um, beautiful Northwest BC here. So these three photos here and this one here is of Prince Rupert. This is our Prince Rupert campus. And as I mentioned, Prince Rupert is located right on the ocean. So you can see this is a photo of the Harbor here. This is a photo of Terrace um, from um, what we call Terrace Mountain. It's a beautiful hiking trail in town. This is our Terrace campus um, overview here. So this is the building that's getting a large renovation right now. Our new student dorms are actually going to be in the part that you can't see right here on this part of the land. Um, this is our trades building where we have um, our student facility, our fitness facility and our cafe right now. 
This is like an additional classroom space. And then over here is where we have our cafeteria. And there's a lot more over here that you can't see from this photo, but it is a fairly large campus. And of course the snow. So we definitely get a lot of that. So as you can see though, we have lots of mountains, fresh water, lots of greenery. It's a very beautiful place to visit. This is our Smithers campus here. And this is just another photo of our Terrace campus. So why would your students be interested in choosing Coast Mountain College? So our campuses are located in safe, small and multicultural communities. So although they are a little smaller than what your students are used to, they are completely safe and students um, really do get to immerse themselves into the Canadian experience. Um, our international students have had no problem getting jobs and really um, immersing themselves into our communities. Uh, we offer experiential learning with small class sizes for personalized education. So students aren't going to be in a classroom among hundreds of other students. The most that they're going to have in their class is the business class is 40 students per intake. Um, and the Associate of Science is even less than that with only 30 students in the, in the intakes. And most of the classes that have labs only have about 18 students because our labs have restrictions on that. So um, they're gonna have a, a really great time to get to know their instructors by name and really um, be able to, to get that personalized education experience. Um, as I mentioned, Northwest BC experiences all four seasons except for Prince Rupert, they're a little bit milder. And so international students truly get the Canadian experience when coming to Northwest BC. We offer a lot of student engagement activities and events on campus every year. Obviously this past year with COVID that hasn't been happening, um, but when we are fully on campus, there's something happening almost every day um, for students to engage and enjoy. We have student services and recruitment team members to guide students every step of the way through their journey at Coast Mountain College from the time they step foot on campus to uh, the time that they cross the graduation stage. So as I mentioned today, I'm going to be focusing on the post degree business program on our Associate of Science. So our post degree business program is a two year diploma program. Um, it allows students to acquire skills for business and entrepreneurship. Career opportunities include management, sales, business consulting, and business ownership, among others. Um, programs will open doors for many Canadian professional designations, such as the Human Resource Professional, CHRP, and Professional Accountant. So students can go on to complete these designations should they wish with this program. There will be additional schooling, but this provides them the, the basis. So I'll just quickly go through the courses. Uh, I'm not going to read all of it for you here, but um, business computers, business communication, these are all three credit courses. That's what the three stands for. So the, the ones with the 100 are the first year level. And then we get into 200 year um, courses for the second uh, year. So organizational behavior, entrepreneurship, human resource management, business finance, management, accounting, business policy and then um, six credits of second year business administration electives at the student's choice. So they can choose two, two courses that are not listed here um, for their electives, um, depending on what their interest is. If they have more interest in the management side or the human resource side or the accounting side. So as I mentioned, um, this program is available at all three of our campuses. Um, September is the Terrace campus. Um, January is for Prince Rupert campus and May is for the Smithers campus. So if your students have missed um, the deadline to apply for September, we are closed for September right now. Um, we have, we're full. Uh, January is still open for our Prince Rupert campus as well as May for our Smithers campus. Typically these applications open about a year in advance. So this September, we will open for September, 2022. Um, and we, we should be open for May intake for Smithers and we're definitely open for January for Prince Rupert campus at this time. So admission requirements for this program is an accredited bachelor's degree, a minimum of a three year bachelor degree from a recognized institution. Doesn't have to be in Canada, it can be an international degree. Um, in English IELTS overall 6.0, no less than 5.5 in modules. We do accept a lot of other English alternatives. So if your student does not have IELTS, um, you can check with MSN. I, I do have a, uh, a link to the um, English alternatives page later on in the presentation so that you can see everything that we accept. We accept the PTEA, 
uh, Duolingo, uh, lots of different ones. Uh, foundations of Math 11 or Pre-Calculus 11 or equivalent is required. So if your students do not have this, we do have a pre-business program as well. So something to keep in mind for that. Um, but most students who have the bachelor's degree um, typically meet these requirements. Um, so don't be afraid to ask. Um, and then successful completion of at least one post-secondary math course, and it can be calculus, stats, or algebra, doesn't matter. So program fees are $14,926.38 Canadian per year. Um, this is for the 2021-2022 academic year. As I'm sure you are aware, tuition fees do tend to go up every year between 2 to 4%. Um, so this is for this year. And this is the price for each year. Uh, a deposit of half the tuition is due in order to receive an LOA. So when students apply, um, they will get a conditional acceptance. And then once their documents are submitted and they pay the deposit of about $7,000 Canadian, they will receive a, um, an official letter of acceptance, which they can use to apply for a study permit. And then semester fees are due 10 days before the program start date. So we're going to go on to the Associate of Science degree program now um, and just um, we'll focus on some resources later on as well. And just keep in mind, you can ask some questions at the end of the presentation. So our Associate of Science degree program is also a two year program. We have many university transfer opportunities with this program. So students want to complete a Bachelor of Science after um, this program transfers to universities all over British Columbia including the University of British Columbia, Simon Fraser University, University of Victoria, uh, many more. Um, so there's a general studies option or an environmental geoscience specialization, depending on what the student's interest is. Um, environmental geoscience is um, very focused on um, in environmental science rather than the general studies option um, could be for students who are interested in going into biology or chemistry or physics um, degree programs. Um, so this program increases employability and earns the first two years of a four-year bachelor's degree and allows students to transfer into third year of a degree program, as I mentioned, in several BC universities for biological, medical, and health programs as well. So our environmental geoscience option, students who obtain this associate degree may go on to complete a bachelor degree in environmental science, geography, geology, or biology. They may also find employment in a variety of fields, including mineral and resource exploration, parks and recreation planning, fish or wildlife management, forestry, climate modeling, geotechnical surveying, community planning, alternative energy projects, and a lot more. So for students who are interested in staying in Terrace, this is a really good option because we have a lot of work like this in our area, um, especially for the wildlife managing and the mineral and resource exploration and the geotechnical surveying. We have a lot of companies that do that, um, especially in BC, very big on forestry and environmental science. So there's a lot of jobs for this. Uh, a lot of our students have gotten jobs, um, not just our international students or domestic students as well, have gotten jobs with just doing the associate degree and not going on to complete a bachelor's. So it's not um, something that is mandatory for them to get a job. They can definitely find employment with the associate degree, um, especially if they decide to stay in the Northwest. So this program has intakes in Terrace and Prince Rupert campus for September and January. So we do say that it's available at the Prince Rupert campus. However, it's not as easy to complete for students in the Prince Rupert campus due to course selection. Um, we're hoping this will be better after COVID. It's just currently right now with COVID, everything was online. So it didn't really matter which, which campus they came into. Um, but it is, they will have more course flexibility and options to choose their courses at the Terrace campus. But it is available at the Prince Rupert campus if the student really wants to live in Prince Rupert, it is an option for them. So admission requirements, um, basically the only English requirement or sorry, the only admission requirement is for that they have to have English 12, which is the IELTS level overall 6.0. Um, they apply to the university credit program. And then students may also need the following prerequisites to complete this program. So life sciences, which is what we call biology in Canada, chemistry, pre-calculus, or physics. 
So they don't need these courses to be admitted into the program. However, in order to complete the program, they may need these for additional courses. It really depends on which courses they want to take. Um, the general science option is a lot more flexible um, than the geoscience option. And we'll talk about that a little bit further on. Um, but it really depends on the courses that the student is interested in. They may not be able to meet the prerequisites if they don't have these courses. So again, it's not necessary for them to be admitted into the program, but they will be uh, reduced to the courses they can take if they don't have these. So the program fees are $16,458.74 Canadian per year. So a little bit more expensive than our business administration program. And then so the courses required for the general option, as I mentioned, the general option is a little bit more flexible. So they have to take six credits of first year English, but we don't tell them which courses of English they have to take. So we have English 101, English 102, and then we also have English 151 and English 152. So they can take any of those four and they only have to take two of them. So they can kind of have flexibility there. Same with the math. They have to take six credits of math. Three of those credits have to be calculus, but the other three can be statistics or algebra. It can be anything. Um, I think we also have a computer science course that counts as a math course. So again, there's a little bit more flexibility. They have to have 36 credits of science, which will include at least three credits in a lab science. Um, so again, 36 credits, they can focus those credits on chemistry if that's what their interest is or biology or physics. They can mix and match if they want to do that as well. Um, it really is a more flexible option for your students who may not know which field they want to go in. They just know that they like science. Um, they also need to have six credits in arts other than the English courses. So not math or lab based science courses. The arts courses would be like psychology, anthropology, our history courses, um, criminology. So again, flexibility depending on what your students enjoy. And then lastly, they need to do six more credits in arts, science, or other areas. So if they prefer the science courses, they can do that. Um, or if they prefer the arts, they can do some more credits in arts. So very flexible options for your students. So you'll see here that the environmental geoscience option is much different, where we actually have specific courses that they need to take. They do still have some flexibility, but there's less flexibility. So for example, they have to take Biology 101, Biology 102, uh, and then CPSC 111, which is our computer studies course, or math, English, or the other English, or they can take one of these. So there is a lot of this. Um, so they have to take English 151, Geography 110, Geography 150, then it's Geography 160, or Geology 157. Then they have to take Geog Geography 203, or they can choose to take Oceanography 208 if Oceanography is what they enjoy. So we have, um, like I said, we give them courses to select from, whereas in the uh, general option, they can kind of pick and choose what their interest is, whereas this one, they can still pick and choose what their interest is, but it's limited, if it makes sense. So we're not gonna go through these a lot, but as you can see, lots of biology and a lot of geography in the this program and then a little bit more math options as well. And then of course, a little bit of chemistry, some physics, and then they have to end it with any um, two field school courses. These are recommended. So our field school courses um, typically occur in the summer months. So basically right now is when our field schools would be starting. So at the end of April, and they happen between May and August in the summer months. So that's definitely something for your students to be aware of. Um, if they don't want to work, uh, or sorry, if they don't want to attend school in the summer, um, then maybe the environmental science option might may not be the best option because they will have to take some courses in the summer. Um, typically, our field schools are very condensed courses, so they only take maybe a week or two, depending on which field school they choose. And they also get to have some really amazing experiences. Um, our students go to Alaska and they get to see some really amazing glaciers. We take them to Haida Gwaii, which is a First Nations island um, off the coast of Prince Rupert, which is one of the most amazing places that you'll ever see in your life. Um, so really cool experiences, but um, they are a little bit more costly 
as well. They do they do have additional expenses because they're traveling. Uh, and of course, again, they happen in the summer months. So just something to keep in mind for your students. And both of the options, the general and the geoscience are 60 credits, so two year programs. So some additional resources, so I'm, I can see that it's getting cut off here. So I'm gonna show you on the website afterwards anyway, but um, all of our program information, including fees can be found at our international site lit, which is just coastmountaincollege.ca slash international slash overview. You'll see every program that we have available for our international students located there with admission requirements, program fees, basically everything I talked about here, the program outline, um, even there's even discussion there about career opportunities. So if you don't remember any of this information, it's all available on our website. Um, for information on acceptable English language alternatives, um, we do have that located here. As I mentioned, we accept a lot more than just IELTS and TOEFL. Um, we have a lot of options for your students. We also have program guides and reports available on our publications page. And I'm gonna show you where to find that. So this includes flip books, international brochures. And then we also have downloadable PDFs available on every program page, um, which I find really easy to use um, to just download that and attach it to an email and send it to the student so that they can easily see all of the information on a one page document rather than having to figure out how to click through our website. Um, if you should require any additional resources, including like logos, program brochures, you can always contact me. We do have an international marketing officer who does create um, branding and publications for international. We are a small college, so he's the only employee in the international marketing um, department. So we really do encourage our agents to utilize the website as much as possible, as well as the videos on our YouTube channel, um, and also get students to uh, follow us on uh, Instagram for the most recent updates and on Facebook as well. It's the best way to stay up to date about what's going on. And of course, we send out our agents the international uh, newsletter almost every month to keep you updated as well. Um, so definitely, if you can't find what you need on the website, then contact me and we can maybe discuss something, but we won't always be able to make something specific. Um, so this is a photo of what our student housing will look like. It's almost done. Um, this is the, the main entrance area here, and then the rooms are located here. Um, so this is just a rendering, so hard to, to get a, to a sense of what it's really going to look like, but it should be done in a few months, and I'll definitely update MSN with some pictures once we have that complete. So I just want to touch on student supports really quickly. Every one of our campuses has an educational advisor. We also have an international advisor who helps students um, once they're accepted into the college. She will assist with travel plans. Um, she also is RESIA certified, so she can help a little bit with study permit questions and immigration questions and uh, questions about the PGWP. We also offer a learning assistance specialist. They help students with, you know, any academic issues that they may be having if they need help to write a paper or they need resources to study for an exam, or if they're struggling in their courses, they can always come and see on one of our learning resource specialists. They're there to help all of our students, domestic or international. We also have accessibility coordinators. This is for students who may have um, learning disabilities or physical needs that need to be addressed. So an example might be if a student falls and breaks their arm and now they need um, somebody to take notes for them we can help find somebody to do that for them. So this person will help with any accessibility needs, whether it's physical or a, a mental disorder. We also offer counseling services. We don't have um, certified counselors on campus, but we do have um, virtual counseling services for our students. And those are in multiple different languages and students can choose to email or text or call these people. Um, and our students really do utilize this service quite a bit. We also have a student union on campus um, and programs such as Leaders in Action and Student Ambassador programs, which are volunteer programs um, to get involved in school. We also have some opportunities for on-campus employment, including in our bookstore, um, as well as our cafeteria and a few other different options. And as I mentioned, new housing is being built for fall 2021 in Terrace. 
So of course, because of the time we're in, oh, this is our longhouse that I mentioned earlier as well. So this is where we have student orientation when we're on campus. Um, and we have a lot of student events in this building as well. Uh, so of course, because of the time that we're in today, I do need to do some COVID-19 updates. So this is just current, as you know, these change constantly. So some programs will be face-to-face -face in fall 2021. Some programs will still have an online option. Some programs, most programs will combine both, have face-to-face -face and online options. So we're really encouraging students to um, come to Canada for this fall rather than staying in uh, their country and studying online, um, especially if they're in certain programs like early childhood education and the Associate of Science is one of those as well because of the, the science labs, they will need to be um, in Canada to complete those science labs because those will be in person. Um, I know the students want to come, so I know this is not a problem. Just, just make it clear, they won't be able to complete their full program if they stay in their home country. They should expect to come to Canada. Students are required to inform our international advisor before they make their travel plans. So the minute they've been accepted and they have their LOA and they have an approved study permit, they should send their approved study permit to Myrna, our international advisor, and get her to assist with their travel plans. The reason for this is because the provincial guidelines for travel are constantly changing and we want to make sure that our students get here safely and don't encounter any problems. So if the student tries to travel too early, they might be turned away by Canadian Border Services. Um, students should really only be traveling about four weeks before their program start date. Um, if they travel earlier, they do risk being turned away at the border. And we want to advise students of this as much as possible. Of course, the student can still choose to do whatever they want to do, um, but we strongly advise them to listen to what the international advisor has to say, because we want them to arrive here safely and we don't want them to get turned away. Um, currently, students must take a negative COVID test prior to departure from their home country and upon arrival in Canada, they need to take another test and they still must quarantine even if they receive a negative result. Three of those days must be spent in a government approved hotel in the port city, so Vancouver or Toronto, wherever they choose to land. Costs will be paid by the student. We're hoping this changes soon, but right now this is still what's happening. Students can no longer fly into Prince Rupert. Air Canada has canceled those flights again due to COVID. They just didn't have enough um, to keep it running. So students who are applying for Prince Rupert must fly into Terrace and then drive or take public transportation to Prince Rupert. Myrna, our international advisor, can help students coordinate that and figure that out. It is recommended that students travel no earlier than four weeks before their program start date or they will be at risk of entry denial by Canadian Border Services, as I mentioned. Students need to ensure that they understand the airline requirements for travel as each airline may have different requirements. So we, Coast Mountain College can only speak to the provincial guidelines and Canadian guidelines. We don't know every airline's requirements and every airline is different. So the student really does need to do their research and ensure that they understand what the airline needs for them to travel. Typically, all a student really needs is an approved study permit and, ex and an acceptance letter. Um, but we have run into a few cases where the airline wants more um, and we can't do things like that to provide for the airline, uh, it, especially if it's last minute, the student's in the airport and is panicking. Um, so it's very important that the student communicates their travel plans with Myrna so that that kind of situation doesn't happen. So something that's new for us right now is we just recently developed an international student entrance award. Um, I will be sending out um, some resources for this once they're developed. Um, our international marketing officer is still working on this. Um, applicable programs are early childhood education, applied coastal ecology, associate of arts or science programs, and our engineering certificate. So unfortunately, business is not one of those programs because we tried to focus on programs that needed a little bit of a boost for enrollment. So there is 30 awards available at $1,500 Canadian each. It is gonna be on a first come first serve basis. And the application deadline is October 15th. So your students have plenty of time to apply. Um, it should be on the website soon. 
um, students must be in Canada by January 2022 to receive these funds and that's because they need to have a social ins insurance number for us to legally give them money. Uh, so more information will be coming soon. I will be sharing it with MSM and we will be including it in our international newsletter as soon as we have um, the information available. So how students can apply. So if you are interested in Coast Mountain College, you can uh, email india at coastmountaincollege.ca. This is our in-country rep. Um, there is a $100 Canadian application fee that is required, but a waiver may be available through MSM. Students are required to pay a $7,000 Canadian deposit in order to receive an LOA from admissions. Remainder of the first year tuition is due prior to the start of the program, and then all documents can be sent to admissions at coastmountaincollege.ca. So for more information, you can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, and Twitter to stay updated. Our YouTube has a lot of really wonderful videos, um, some that are applicable to programs and some that are just general. Um, so definitely check out our videos. There's a lot there. And then contact information. So this is my email here. If you have any questions, you always um, email me or Niti, who is available at the India email address. This is my WhatsApp. And then we also have an international general um, inbox that our admissions team um, reviews. And then as I mentioned, we have our in-country rep, Niti. Um, I just wanna spend a few moments to show you um, our website. So I'm just gonna make sure you should still be able to see my screen here. So this, um, our publications and promotions. So how you get here is if you go to about CMTN and you go to news and media and then communications and publications and promos. So this is where you will find our PDFs as well as um, our flip books. So we have our international view book here, as you can see, this one is our domestic view book. So make sure you, you know, are looking at the international ones as well. We have program brochures. This is our older view book. We try to keep these as updated as possible. Our international program brochure is here. Um, again, fees change all the time. So just please use the website to ensure that the fees are correct. Um, but this is where you can get all of those kind of publications. And then I also just wanted to quickly show you. So if you go to our international pages, and um, this is where you can find um, our programs that are open to international students. So for example, if you go here, every program has this on the side, this print options button. If you click this, you can download a PDF of this page. And this is really, really great to send to students because like I said, it's a, it's a quick document that gives them the fees, it gives them the admission requirements, it gives them the overview of the program, it gives them the courses that they're gonna have to take, it talks about the intakes, it gives them the faculty members if they have specific questions, um, they can contact the faculty members. Of course, we would encourage them to reach out to myself in recruitment, but if they have questions and they wanna reach out to a faculty member, that's totally okay as well. So every program page has that option. Um, so I use that quite often in my role, just to send it to students. So our website is full of resources for you. Um, so that is the end of my presentation. I think we're gonna have a Q and A uh, session now as well. So thank you so much for uh, listening. Yeah, hi, thanks Jessica. Thanks for all the information you provided till now. Yeah. We understand that every information is there, uh, but still we have some Thank questions you so what much, you need to answer. Jessica, for the wonderful yeah. presentation. We already have some few questions here. Okay. Attendees, please ask your question. This is an opportunity for you uh, to hear directly from Jessica. Uh, we have some questions here. Do your school offer any scholarship? So we don't offer any scholarships, but as I mentioned in the presentation, we just developed the International Entrance Award, um, which will be available for students who are um, planning on coming for fall September 2021. Um, so if the students haven't applied yet to the college and they haven't been accepted yet, there's still plenty of time because the deadline is not until October 15th, um, but it is for this September 2021.
Thank you. I think uh, we also, also have some questions mm -hmm. on uh, job opportunity for international students at the campus. Can you explain opportunities that are available to international students coming to CMTN? Yes, of course. So as I mentioned, um, the community has a lot of uh, options right now for off-campus on employment and on-campus employment, we do usually have a couple of options for students. So as I mentioned, we have a bookstore and we have hired international students to work in our bookstore, as well as we have a cafeteria and a cafe. So um, for students specifically who might be in culinary, they don't have to be in culinary because the cafe is um, is a cashier position, but we do hire international students in those roles as well. Um, we also have a few councils on campus. So one specifically is education council and another one is our board of governors. So these are um, jobs that students are elected into. So they need to apply and they need to have a student um, elect them in order to, to obtain the, this seat. And then they have to uh, attend meetings and um, they have a voice on these councils as well, which is a really good opportunity for students to get involved. And they do receive payment for them to attend those meetings, um, but it is different than a, than a regular job. Like they only happen, um, the Board of Governors is a quarterly meeting. So every three months there's a meeting and then the uh, Education Council meeting is a monthly meeting and they only receive the money if they actually um, attend the meetings. A lot of the students, um, you know, apply and get elected and, and then they don't attend the meetings and they wonder why they don't get paid. So they do have to attend, but there are there are limited opportunities on campus for employment, but there are some, yes. Yes, I think uh, there are some other questions bordering whether uh, CMTN is a public uh, college or private college. It is a public college. Thank you. And then there is another question here. The attendee is asking if mm -hmm. uh, English speaking country, we need to write any English test. No, um, there is a spot on our website here. I should have showed you that, um, that, um, that students, it is our, it is our um, English alternatives page. Um, if they go to the language requirements page, there is a spot that says countries that satisfy listening and speaking requirements. Um, so there's a lot of countries there. So Nigeria, Namibia, uh, Philippines, Rwanda, Sierra Leone, um, all of those countries are, um, they satisfy the English language standard for listening and speaking. So they do not have to do that if their country is listed on that list. I'll put it in the chat. Okay, thank you, Jessica. Uh, there is another question being asked by an agent. He's asking, Praventure, if the student wants to pay a deposit and is having less than 7,000, is it possible to pay? Maybe pro uh, probably 5,000 Canadian dollar. No, unfortunately, we don't um, we don't change that deposit. That's we have that for all of our students. It's a, it is a requirement for the deposit of seven thousand to be paid. Um, in terms of tuition, sometimes our students are able to set up payment plans, but that is through the registrar's office, and it is a one like it, it, we case by case basis that that is approved. They have to have a very good reason about why they need to have a study plan or a, a payment plan, sorry. 
Um, and uh, I have no say on whether or not that would be approved. That's completely up to our registrar and we actually just got a new registrar. So that could very well be changing soon. But unfortunately, um, the deposit is set that way for all of our students. So I did see a couple questions on um, the admission uh, process. Um, the admission process is typically very quick. Once the student applies, they should receive a response from admissions within 10 business days. And then of course, once the tuition deposit is paid, they should receive um, a letter of acceptance within 10 business days. So it, it depends on how quickly um, the student pays their deposit, but they should be able to receive their conditional um, acceptance and a letter of acceptance within a, a maximum 20 days notice. Um, and again, if, if they're quick, admissions will be quick as well. I guess there are a few more questions, Jessica. Let me read it uh -huh. for you. So, for sure. yeah. so the last one, which just come that, does CMTN have a meet and greet service for students? Um, so do you mean like to meet with other students or um, like an like an orientation because we do have orientation every term um, and that is an opportunity for students to meet with other students as well as meet their faculty and other CMTN staff. Um, we're hoping that we have a face to face in person orientation this fall, which would be really exciting, but for the last um, couple of uh, semesters we have been doing those um, online. Uh, and then, of course, we do have plenty of opportunities for students to engage and meet with each other on campus uh, as well, because we have student engagement events all the time. So definitely lots of opportunities for students to, to, to meet with each other and meet with other faculty and staff. Okay. Thanks, Jessica. And mm -hmm. I got a few more by the time. Does CMTN take students with British curriculum certificate? Um, I, well, does that mean like they've graduated in, in, uh, British Columbia, like from high school? Uh, I think it's same, uh, please live it. Actually the next line that was, which mentioned here is it says, please level does not CMT and take the O level or the A level. I'm so, not a hundred percent sure about that. That's, that's new for me. So that would be a question for admissions. So um, if Kwame wants to e email that to myself or Niti, um, I can check with admissions to find that out. But from, uh, from my knowledge right now, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure what that is. Okay. And so next question here is for cases where the students decide to cancel and tuition deposit is paid, where will they get refund? If they are denied their study permit, we will refund them. They also have the option to defer to another intake. Um, but if they were approved a study permit and they decide to cancel because they decided they want to go to another college, unfortunately, they will not receive their tuition deposit back. Okay. Thanks, Jessica. Mm -hmm. uh, I think rest all the questions are done. Uh, let me see once. Do you have, yeah, there's one more. There are a few more actually. Okay. Do you have any questions in a uh, course in IT? We don't have any IT courses yet, but we are working on developing something soon. We know that that's a very popular option for international students. So we're, um, we're working on that. <laughs> okay. And is there any deposit to be made before acceptance letter is given? Yeah. Or if yeah. yes, what is the minimum deposit? The minimum deposit is usually half of the tuition fee. So typically it's $7,000 Canadian. 
Um, so students apply, they receive what we call a conditional acceptance, um, but the deposit needs to be paid before they receive their uh, official letter of acceptance. And only the official letter of acceptance will be accepted for um, study permit application. The conditional acceptance is not good enough for them to apply for a study permit with that. So they do need to pay the deposit before they receive their LOA. And as I mentioned, it's $7,000 Canadian, and that is all um, on our website. So I'm just gonna put that in the chat um, for um, reference here. These are the steps for international students to apply. Yeah. Which much thanks, Jessica, much thanks for this. Mm -hmm. Surely this will be helpful. And the few more questions are, uh, I meant visa denials will they have refund okay so i guess he has concluded his question and made it one more liner there he has added i meant visa denials if they have visa denials will they get refund yes if they have a visa denial they will get the refund yes they have to make a request to our office like we won't know that they were denied unless they let us know but they can email um admissions at um, coastmountaincollege.ca and send us a copy of their visa denial and then we will process a refund. Sure. Okay. And uh, one is asking visa assistance to international students. So do we provide yeah. some visa assistance? Yeah. So as I mentioned, we do have an international advisor on staff. Her name is Myrna Ordona. She is RESIA certified. So there are limitations to what she can and cannot help with because she's not a, a registered immigration consultant, um, but she is available to assist students with their um, visa application if they need it. Um, like I said, she is limited based on what she can answer because she's not RCIC certified, but she does have her RESIA certification. Great. Thanks, Jessica. I guess uh, these were it. So we had these many questions as of. Well. So anybody else have some question to you know mention and ask, please type in the chat box. We're still here. We have still eight minutes left. So we can proceed, yeah. I think everybody is good to go and there are no as such questions also coming here. You want to add something Jessica and wind up the session? Uh, I just want to say um, that thank you very much for coming to, uh, today and attending and anytime that you need assistance or have questions you can definitely reach out to myself or Niti. We're here to support you um, and we're also here to support the students so of course we're really hoping to have a great normal non-COVID um, school year this September and given that you know we're going to have a really great orientation setup where we really introduce students to the community um, as well as the faculty of staff and other students um, typically we also bring um, you know job searchers on campus as well so students can apply for that we we bring banks to the campus so that students can open a bank account um, we bring uh, cell phone companies to orientation so students can uh, apply for a cell phone. So we really um, do our best to immerse the students into the community and get them set up as much as possible. So we're really hoping that we can have um, a great year and have an orientation where students get all the help that they need to set themselves up. Exactly. Thanks. Thanks, Jessica. So I think, yes, yes we all wish the same. We should have a COVID free year ahead. I mean, at the time ahead. Everybody is, I mean, too much done with it. We're all expecting a better time to come now. So all the best to you. All the best to you as well. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Jessica. Thanks. Thanks a lot.